have another one for us to look at. This one again has parentheses, so we want to do the work inside the parentheses first. You have to be real careful with this one. It just jumps out at you in this problem to say 7 plus 3 is 10 and to write down 10 times 8. But you have to be careful. You're not doing things in the right order if you do that. So I'll, we're supposed to do one step at a time, so we're going to do what's in parentheses first. So we'll write down 7 plus 3. And when we do what's in parentheses, we get 8. Now, if you look at that carefully, what we have left is 7 plus 3 times 8. We don't have any exponents, so we can't do exponents next. But we do have the step rule 3 that says multiply and divide from left to right. We do have some multiplying. That's what we should do next. Here we have 3 times 8. That should be done before that addition. So I should write down 7 plus and do my 3 times 8 and get 24. When I take 7 and add it to 24, I will now get 31. So you have to make sure that you do one step at a time and follow your rules. We're looking at a lot of different examples because there's so many different kinds of problems that we can have. And so I wanted you to see as many examples as possible. Okay, this problem has about everything. It has two sets of grouping symbols. It has two exponents. It has some multiplying, it has some dividing, and it has some adding, and it has subtractions. Actually, it does have everything. So we need to start and do one thing at a time. Now, our, our rule says to work with the grouping symbols first and to work from the inside out. So what that means is we go as far in the grouping symbols as we can, which means we go to this 9 minus 4, and we do that first. So I'm going to copy the problem down and try to make it look just like it did before. But all I'm going to do is what's inside this parenthesis. I'm going to do the 9 minus 4 and get 5. And now I'm supposed to keep doing what's in, inside of the, the grouping symbol. So I finished with this, but now I've got to do what's inside the brackets. Okay, inside my brackets, I have two things. Well, I have three things. I have multiplying here, I have adding, and I have two raised to the third power. Now, I didn't write the rest of the problem down. Let me do that. And I'll write the rest of our problem down. Okay, inside those grouping symbols, I've got to pick what to do next. So inside of here, since I finished doing inside of this parentheses, I need to now go over here and do the exponents because the exponents will be what would come next in there. So I'd write the 3 times 5 down plus, and I come over here to this 2 to the third power. And if I didn't know what that answer was, I come up here to the side and work it out. So let's write down. Three twos. That's what it means for us to do it. We're doing two to the third power. Two times two would be four. Four times two would be eight. So that would be our answer. So we'd fill in an eight here. Now, once we've done that, we still hadn't finished inside that bracket. So we put our brackets down again. Keep writing the rest of the problem down just as it was. We still want to do just one thing at a time. Now, inside that bracket, we've got to follow our rules for order. After we do exponents, we're supposed to do multiplying and dividing, so we've got to do this multiplying. Now, we still hadn't finished doing inside the grouping symbol, so I can still write everything else down. And go back inside my grouping symbol, and now I can finally get the answer to the part inside the grouping symbol. 15 plus 8 is 23. So all that first work was just getting the stuff done inside the brackets and doing it in the correct order inside the brackets. And now that I've finished that, I'm now ready to move outside the brackets. 
Now, once I move outside the brackets, follow my next rule. Okay, your rules say to do things inside your grouping symbols, then to do your exponents. So the next thing we need to do is to do that 23 squared. And we don't know what that answer is, so we need to work that out. So let's work out 23 times 23, because it means that 23 is a factor twice. That would be 9 and 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. So we'd have 9 and 12, carry our 1. And that would give us 529. So I need to write that down. And copy the rest of the problem down. Five twenty nine minus sixteen divided by four. Okay, so I finished doing my exponents, so I go to my next rule. Okay, your next rule says multiply and divide from left to right. So I have to come over here and do this division. Now before I do that, I write the rest of the problem down up to that division, five twenty nine minus. And then I do 16 divided by 4. So you're dividing 4 into 16, and that will go 4 times. Now you're finally down to the last step, which is 529 minus 4. And that gives us 525. And that would be our answer. That's a lot of work to get down to 525. But you need to go through each step like we've done, or you will not get the correct answer. I have one last example to show you. This one involves what well, looks like a fraction because you have something over something else. But the line here just means to divide. So sometimes you have a problem to work on top and a problem to work on bottom, and then you want to divide. That bar across there is almost like a grouping symbol because what you have to do is work the top out, work the bottom out, and then divide. And as we work those out, we can kind of work them along together. So let's start with the top. On the top, our rule says to work inside those grouping symbols first. So if we work inside of each grouping symbol, and we really can do them both together, that would give us a 5 and a 3. So I'm working inside the grouping symbols. And when I come down to the bottom here, I have 10 minus 20 divided by 4. Okay, I don't have any grouping symbols on the bottom. I don't have any exponents. So I'm supposed to multiply and divide from left to right. So if I do that, I have some dividing over here. So I copy down 10 minus... And I come up here and do this dividing. 20 divided by 4. That would give me 5, so I write that down. So on the bottom, I have 10 subtract 5. On the top, I have 5 and then 3. Now, when those two are written side by side like that, it means for us to multiply, so we'll have 15 on top. On the bottom, we have 10 minus 5, which is 5. So we have 15 over 5. Well, that means 15 divided by 5, so we come up with an answer of 3. Now I have some practice problems that I'd like for you to do. The directions are to simplify each expression and to come up with an answer. Okay, the first problem is 8 subtract 3 plus 4 subtract 2, plus 5. Second problem is 19 subtract 7, and then you have a parenthesis, 10 subtract 8, and the parenthesis closed. Third problem is 2, parenthesis, 3 plus 4, close parenthesis, then an exponent of 2, minus 14, divided by 7. Copy the problems down carefully before you cut the tape off. You cut the tape off and work your problems. And don't cut it back on until you finish them, and then you can check your answers.
Here are the answers to the practice problems. The first answer is 12. The second answer is 5. And the third answer is 96. This concludes our work with exponents and our work with order of operations. I want to stress to you again how important the information in this lesson is. Please learn the four rules that tell you the order in which you work a problem.